What was she doing? Ellie was playing with her favorite toy, her doll. do some errands, so she asked Pocoyo to look after her doll. She told Pocoyo to be careful not to wake her because she was asleep. Pocoyo began to feel sleepy too, and by accident he gave the pram a shove. The doll went flying! Pocoyo picked the doll up, and then he realized how much fun she was to play with. Pocoyo began throwing the doll up into the air, and that was even more fun. He threw the doll so many times that she broke. As Pocoyo didn't want Ellie to get angry, he put on the doll's wig and pretended to beat her. Pocoyo stayed so still that Ellie believed he was her doll. What a mother! Shh. Ellie took Pocoyo for a walk in her doll's pram. Then, she started dancing happily with her doll and kept spinning her around and around. Pocoyo didn't dare tell Ellie the truth, but he was starting to get tired of being a doll. How long could he go on pretending? happened by and noticed Ellie's doll looked a little odd. Pocoyo could not stand being Ellie's doll anymore, so he pulled off the wig. Pocoyo threw the wig up into the air and it landed on Pato's head. Poor Ellie was so surprised. Luckily, Sleepy Bird had found the real doll. Pocoyo felt really bad about having lied to Ellie. Ellie's doll had lost her hair. <laughs> and what do you think Pocoyo did? He went to say sorry to Ellie. Sorry, Ellie. But he got a big surprise too. Sorry, Ellie. Sorry, Ellie. Ellie was crying with laughter. The doll's hair came on and off. Pocoyo had pretended to be a doll for nothing. Hooray for friends who tell the truth. Pocoyo found a big green wooden 
What could it be? Door. It was a door, and Pocoyo wanted to know what was behind it. When he opened the door, Pocoyo got a big surprise because there was an enormous blue sky. Pocoyo was so excited, he ran to show Ooh. the door to Pato, who was watering his plants. Ooh. But when they opened the door, they got another surprise. Now, they could see the bottom of the sea. Pato wanted to take a closer look at what was on the other side of the door, so he flew inside. Pocoyo had no idea where Pato had gone. How would he ever find him? Every time Pocoyo opened the door, Pato was there. Suddenly, Pato disappeared. Now, every time Pocoyo opened the door, he saw something different. What a strange door! After opening and closing the door many times, Pocoyo found Pato. He was floating through space. Pocoyo jumped into his famouche and took off to find his friend flying through space. After flying for a very long time, Pocoyo found another door. What could be behind this one? There were another three doors. This was all very mysterious. Pocoyo didn't know what to do. Which door could Pato be behind? Pocoyo decided to try the green door. But Pato wasn't there. Suddenly, the door fell over. And Pocoyo heard a noise that reminded him of somebody. Could it be Pato? Luckily, Ellie was passing by and she was able to rescue Pato. Pato and Pocoyo were finally back together again when suddenly, they heard a knock on the door. Who could it be? It was Ellie! She had organized a big party. Hooray for Ellie! And hooray for friends! running around, but Pato really wanted to go to sleep. Even 
Bingo, it was time for Pocoyo to sleep too. No. He just wasn't no. tired. Pato tried to persuade Pocoyo to go to bed. At last, it looked like Pocoyo was going to let Pato get some rest. Wonderful! Pocoyo climbed up onto his bed. See? That wasn't so bad. Good night, said Pocoyo to Pato. But as soon as Pato switched off the light, he began to hear some very strange noises. He still couldn't sleep. Pocoyo was the one making the noises, drinking his drink very loudly through a straw. Uh-oh. Pato seemed pretty angry. Once again, he asked Pocoyo to let him get some rest. Pato went back to bed and switched off the light. But, once again, strange noises could be heard in the dark. Pato, who was rather upset by now, explained to Pocoyo this was no time to start building a tower. At last, Pocoyo appeared to understand. He put away his building blocks and went to bed. Once again, Pato tried to fall asleep. But once again, something strange happened as soon as it was dark. Pocoyo was playing with his toy train. That was it. Pato was really fed up. Pato, who was getting more and more upset, reminded Pocoyo he should not make so much noise at night. But while Pato was telling Pocoyo off, what do you think Pocoyo did? He fell asleep. That's wonderful, Pato thought. Now he'd finally be able to get some rest. All he had to do was turn off the lights and go to sleep. Oh no! Now he was the one who couldn't fall asleep. He even tried listening to some quiet music. Wow. Wow. A few of his friends began to sing a lullaby for Pato. He was sure to fall asleep now. <laughs> At last, Pocoyo and Pato were soundly asleep. Good night, Pocoyo. Good night, Pato. Sweet dreams. <laughs> Pooper. One day, 
Fukuyo was running around, carrying all kinds of things. A radio, balloons. What was he going to do with it all? It looked like Pocoyo was getting ready for a party. But for whom? Party, party, party! Party, party, party! Party, party, party! Party, party, party! It was a party for his friends. Oh, how happy they all were. grabbed a bunch of fruit and made himself a hat. Then he started dancing with lots of swing. They were all having so much fun watching Pato dance. But wait a moment, where was Pocoyo? Pukuyo had walked over to the radio, and then, all of a sudden, without asking anyone if that would be okay, he switched off the music. Pukuyo didn't want his friends to dance. He wanted them to play catch with him. Everyone was very confused. And on top of it all, Pocoyo's game was a little strange. They had to hand each other the ball instead of throwing it. Pocoyo's friends handed the ball to one another, but they were all a bit confused by this game Pocoyo had made up. The truth is that none of them was having much fun playing this way. who was becoming really bored, decided to change the rules. But Pocoyo didn't want Pato to bounce the ball, so he took it away from him. Then, Pocoyo made up a new game. He wanted everyone to jump up and down like him. Pato, Fred, Ellie and Baby Bird thought it would be more fun to jump upside down. But once again, Pocoyo wanted them all to do what he said. Fed up with only being allowed to do what Pocoyo wanted, Pato and Fred decided to have a dancing contest. Uh-oh! Pocoyo didn't want anyone to do anything without his permission. So he took the radio away. Stop! Pocoyo had spent the whole party telling his friends what to do. And he ended up bored and on his own.
Pocoyo apologized for having been such a party pooper and thought Sorry. that together they could all organize a much better party. Sorry. Sorry. And what a great party they had! Hooray for Pocoyo! And hooray for friends that have fun together! One fine day, Ellie was playing with her favorite dog. She had organized a fabulous picnic. But all of a sudden, she began to hear thunder. So she decided to go, rather than be caught in the storm. But all of a sudden, she began to hear thunder. Ellie ran to take cover under a tree, but soon realized there was no thunder. It was Pato playing his drum. <coughs> Ellie set up her picnic again in no time. But where had her dog gone? Ellie became very angry because she thought Pato must have hidden her doll. Then, when she could not find her, Ellie decided it must have been Sleepy Bird who took her doll. Oh, how angry she was! When she still couldn't find her, Ellie even accused poor Caterpillar for hiding her doll. Poor Ellie. When Pocoyo saw her crying, he thought perhaps he could find Ellie's doll for her. Maybe Pocoyo had found a way to help his friend Ellie, but how? Detective Pocoyo. Pocoyo had turned into a detective! Would Detective Pocoyo be able to get Ellie's doll back? The first thing Detective Pocoyo did was to ask for a picture of the doll. Then he set off, determined to solve the mysterious case. Detective Pocoyo considered everyone as a possible suspect. Even Pato, who had spent all day looking after his plants. Detective Pocoyo then followed the trail of a new suspect. But it was soon pretty obvious that Caterpillar couldn't have hidden the doll. Not yet. Detective Pocoyo looked everywhere for the doll. But poor Ellie was becoming more and more desperate. Ellie could not figure out where her doll could be. What about you? Have you seen her anywhere? All of a sudden, Ellie remembered she had put her doll in her bag when she thought it was about to start raining. What a lovely reunion! Detective Pocoyo eventually ended up figuring out the truth 
even though Ellie had not apologized to her friends for mistrusting them. In the end, however, Detective Pocoyo convinced Ellie she should say sorry to their friends, and she didn't take long to do it. The mystery of the missing doll had finally been solved. Hooray for Pocoyo, and hooray for friends! Thank you.